This is INA, Issues and Answers, addressing the issues important to you and our community. And now, INA, Issues and Answers. Hello and welcome to INA, Issues and Answers, a public affairs program of the Omaha radio stations of NRG Media. My name is Ed Thompson and I am your host. And it is now uh, close to the middle of March, which means we are very close to the tax deadline. And uh, yeah, I know that makes everybody happy hearing that. Um, but uh, today on the show, we're going to have some very vital information for those those of you who have not prepared your taxes yet, um, in regards to uh, tax fraud, uh, not just tax fraud, but scams that are going to try to scam you out of your money. And that's never a good thing. And so we're joined by Jim Hegarty of the uh, uh, Better Business Bureau. He's the president and CEO of the BBB. And Jim, glad to have you on the program this morning. Hey, great to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, tax time is not anybody. It, it just can't be anybody's favorite time of the year. But I can imagine that if, uh, you know, somebody got their taxes in about this time and then all of a sudden an, uh, a scam hits them and uh, they not only lose uh, their refund, but a lot of personal information, that's that's a scary thing to have happen on top of a tax bill. Sure. Yeah, I think probably every listener, every adult listener uh, has been involved in some kind of a data compromise, right? So we've all received some sort of a notification that our ID was in our, our, our personal information, sensitive information was involved in some sort of data breach. So it's probably likely that at some point, all a lot of our information, if not all of our information is out there in the ether. Uh, it's available. Uh, on the dark web uh, for sale uh, at a pretty cheap price. Uh, so a, a lot of people over the last few years have discovered that uh, scammers um, who are very prolific in this, these are organized crime gangs that perpetrate these schemes and they use your uh, social security information or personal or sensitive information about you to file claims in your name hoping that you haven't filed your taxes yet. So an important tip is to file your taxes as soon as you possibly can, uh, because a lot of people getting they they when they go to file their taxes, they're notified by the IRS uh, that a distribution's already been made for the tax year. Uh, and that's like the super tip off to the rip off uh, that they have been victimized uh, by one of these sophisticated crime gangs that gather this information. They file tens and thousands uh, of these returns. Uh, you know, hoping uh, that somebody like me or you hasn't filed our tax return yet. And this is one of those situations where if you find out after the fact, there's not much more much you can do about it, is there? Well, I think there is something that you can do about it, but it's not easy. Uh, it's not an easy situation to unwind. Uh, and it's uh, it's an unnecessary headache that obviously nobody wants. Uh, I mean, it's not not I mean, it's not uh, impossible to deal with the IRS, but it isn't easy. Uh, and so I, I guess the tip that we would provide to any anybody that's listening today is, is that if you haven't filed your taxes yet for 2022, get it done as soon as possible. Uh, I mean, the IRS is doing everything they can do uh, to slow down these scammers, but there have been hundreds of millions of dollars paid out to them uh, in these phony uh, tax returns. What are some of the, uh, the, 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 the big one that I know that uh, I, I've, I've read about is the IRS impersonation scam. Is that the most common one? Yeah. So, I mean, imposter scams are a big, pro a big problem for us, you know, whether it's the IRS or whether it's somebody calling a senior claiming to be be with social security services you know during open enrollment period um there was a period of time i think when most listeners will remember 
I mean, if if they have an answering machine in their home or they get voicemail, uh, that probably there was a recording from somebody claiming to be an IRS agent calling them about a very time sensitive tax issue uh, that they needed to get back to them on. They'd provide a number. Uh, oftentimes they would provide a badge number. Many times uh, the individuals leaving these recordings uh, did not have a great command of the English language. Uh, so, you know, that that clearly was one of the tip offs uh, that it's not likely that the IRS is. Well, first of all, the IRS doesn't contact people that way. Um, you're not going to get a phone call from them. You're not going to get a text uh, and you're not going to get an email from them. Uh, the way that they communicate with the American public is through mail. Uh, so those those phone calls claiming to be from IRS agents needing you to call, um, expressing urgency uh, that it's very important that you call quickly to avoid garnish, garnishment of wages or potential arrest. You know, those are all like dramatic red flags uh, that it's a total ripoff. It is not legitimate. Those calls are not real. And they're pretty much untraceable, aren't they? These people are hard to catch. Yeah, they are. I think that uh, there's been some legislation uh, enabled uh, that has allowed uh, carriers to shut a lot of those calls down. I mean, those robocalls uh, that we used to receive pretty much nonstop, I think you'll notice that they've slowed down pretty dramatically. They haven't gone away completely. Uh, there's a lot of laws that um, are connected to this, but I, but, but I, you know, the, the I think the carriers, uh, the telephone providers, and the services they have tools now to identify uh, that these are not legitimate calls, and they can get them blocked before they hit you. I matter of fact, uh, and now, yeah, and, and, go ahead. And, and now, I mean. All of us get uh, scam likely notifications uh, on our cell phones. Uh, if it's a scam, I know I know I have T-Mobile uh, and anytime that they suspect that it's a scam, it says scam likely. Uh, it doesn't always mean it is, uh, but it's probably a good indicator that that's not a call that you want to answer. Yeah, as, as, you, as you were talking about that, I mean, just yesterday, as I pulled into my garage, my phone rang and, uh, you know, take a look at it. And sure enough, uh, it I got a warning from my carrier that it is likely a scam caller. And, uh, you know, so it, it, that call was e an e easy decision not to have to take that. So, um, so, so all all of all of that is a result of, of of what really has been a massive epidemic in these schemes and scams, and and again, almost all of this is perpetrated from offshore. Uh, organized crime gangs are involved in this, so it's just another line of business for them. You know, whether it's a romance scam, whether it's an IRS impersonator, whether it's somebody sending an envelope uh, to your parents or your grandparents telling them uh, that they've won $3 million uh, in a European lottery, or whether it's somebody calling uh, seniors telling them that their grandchild's been arrested in a foreign country on spring break. I mean, it goes on and on, uh, and it's typically all the same people, uh, just with different lines of business. And and identity impersonation isn't just the only one. There are a couple of different schemes that uh, that uh, these criminals use. Uh, uh, the other one is uh, tax identity theft. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, well, I mean, essentially, I think that uh, th this is just, you know, people that uh, have assumed, you know, your identity um, through whatever resources they're utilizing. Uh, and and again, they're they're simply filing returns in your name. That's got to be frustrating um, for a person who, you know, is, you know, doing their duty, doing their their daily go to work, uh, put in their 40 hours, uh, do the right things, try to be a good citizen, live a good life, and then have one of these things just come and, 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 and just smack you down. That's, that has got to be just gut-wrenching. It's super frustrating. I mean, it's frustrating just to have to continually change out your debit cards 
uh, because they've been involved in some sort of a data breach uh, and they may be compromised. Uh, but when you get involved in this kind of a situation where you know you, you're not able to get a tax return that you're you're expecting, I mean, it could be a significant amount of money. Uh, you're not getting it because somebody filed a return in your name using your ID. Uh, the IRS paid uh, the return, and it's likely going to take you months to be able to prove that it happened, um, get it unwound somehow, uh, and eventually, hopefully, uh, get your return. Is uh, Jim, we're speaking with uh, Jim Haggerty from uh, the Better Business Bureau about uh, tax uh, uh you know, tax impersonation scams, theft scams, things of that nature. Um, is working with a professional tax preparer uh, a good way to avoid some of these things? Well, I mean, it depends. I mean, uh, it, again, filing early, whether you do it yourself or whether you work with a tax professional uh, is a key ingredient here. I mean, you can go to a tax professional, but if one of but if a return has been filed in your name in advance of that, uh, the fact that you're working with a professional isn't going to change the outcome. However, uh, we, we certainly do uh, advise people to consult tax professionals. Uh, clearly, some are better than others. There's a lot of pop-up tax preparation uh, that goes on this time of year, and and some of those are fine. Uh, others may not be. It's really important uh, for consumers and businesses uh, to do their due diligence. So check those companies out. You can go to BBB.org. You can see, you know, what sort of a business review we have on them. Uh, you can look at, you know, overall uh, customer reviews on the business to see if people have had problematic experiences. Uh, but uh, our data complaints, it, it, cont it contains complaint history, uh, the way in which businesses respond to issues that are brought to their attention. Uh, so it's a great resource to utilize just to be sure that you're dealing with somebody uh, that other people haven't had issues with. Uh, you know, we encourage uh, we, we encourage consumers all the time uh, to look for businesses that have gone through the BBB's accreditation process. I mean, you'll see in my background, it's a sign of a better business. Um, it's an indicator uh, that a company has been vetted stringently by us. They meet our standards uh, and they've made a commitment to be responsive if issues are brought to their attention regarding any services they provide. Uh, so, yeah, so it, it, it's I think just it's important if you are going to use a tax professional, make sure you check them out. Uh, you know, don't just respond to an ad that you see uh, an email or maybe a text message from, uh, you know, folks that are soliciting those services this time of year. Uh, you know, take some time, do some due diligence. This is big stuff, right? I mean, you're providing every ounce of sensitive information about yourself. Uh, to the person that you're sitting with, you want to be sure that that's somebody that you feel comfortable that you can trust. You mentioned email just a short time ago, and email phishing scams are are huge anyway. Uh, right. You know, for all kinds of things, it, 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 just trying to get that credit card number for whatever for for whatever reason. But it's also uh, uh, an issue when it comes to tax preparation too, isn't it? Yeah. So um, clearly. Lots of emails get sent from these organized crime groups that appear to be from the IRS. They're not. Um, you get emails that appear to be from your financial institution. They're not. Uh, they can look extraordinarily legitimate, right? So uh, do not lean into the fact that it looks legitimate. Uh, these are very sophisticated criminals. These are sophisticated approaches that try to reel you in. Uh, they've got graphic designers. Uh, they know how to get emails through filters. Uh, and so it's not uncommon, particularly this time of the year, uh, that you would see an email that appears to be from the IRS indicating that there's some sort of an issue uh, with your taxes, giving you a number that you need to call. Never do that. Don't ever do that. Um, always call the IRS at a number that you've gone and found online that you know belongs to them. And be careful when you do a Google search for the IRS that it is irs.gov and that there aren't some other nuances in that email, right? That some of these scammers will, that they will, they'll, they'll pay for ads uh, for high listings on Google searches. 
um, and create the illusion uh, that you're maybe connecting with the IRS when you're not. When these criminals send out these kinds of scams, do they cast a wide net or are they kind of focused? Is there a certain demographic group uh, that they that they try to reel in first uh, as opposed to another one? Well, I think it depends on like what where where we're at seasonally. So right now, I mean, clearly they're going to be sending millions of emails uh, that appear to be from the IRS uh, during open enrollment uh, for Medicaid, Medicare, uh, or Social Security. They may uh, they may target just senior population. So I mean, they buy leads just like any legitimate company that's trying to solicit and do sales. Uh, so they they're very specific about demographics. Uh, and so it's very likely that this time of year we'd see more of those. Uh, uh, you know, during uh, over Valentine's Day, you might get a lot of spam emails um, that are connected to what look like uh, greeting cards that have been sent to you uh, by a loved one, uh, but they're not. Um, I mean, you could be minding your own business at work today and get an email from what you think is somebody in your company telling you that you're going to have a food truck outside today, for gosh sakes, um, and click here to take a look at the menu. And that may be uh, a phishing scheme. So, again, uh, you just have to be super careful. Um, if the email that you're getting isn't from a trusted source, somebody that you and even if it is, I mean, because people's emails get hijacked. You know, their Facebook contacts get hijacked and suddenly, you know, you're getting a message from somebody you think, you know, um, there's a link there with some with some you know information that might be of interest to you. You just need to be super cautious out there right now, for and, sure. And, and this is not just something they can shoot through their email. They can shoot it to uh, someone's uh, social media accounts, uh, Facebook, Twitter, whatever. And text as well. So yes. lots of lots of phishing attempts through text messaging for sure okay um what are some of the uh, i i do have a list of uh that uh, your your assistants provided us uh with tips to avoid these tax uh scams do you uh can, can you run down that list and uh you know give us a good idea of what we should uh, be looking out for and how we can take steps to avoid trouble well, one of the things that the IRS is providing, I mean, since this uh, epidemic of tax fraud where all, all of these claims were being filed, uh, you know, using stolen information, uh, they now can give you uh, a, a personal information number. It's a six digit number. You and the IRS are the only two people that know this number. Uh, and so you can insist that your return has to have that PIN number. Uh, so in other words, and so it, it's not likely that the scammers would have access to this. And so going to irs.gov um, and signing up and getting one of those PIN numbers is a great way to defend yourself against somebody filing taxes in your name. Again, we talked about filing early. We think that that's a super important tip. Uh, you want to be clear uh, that if you if you're contacting the IRS, that it is the IRS that you're contacting. Don't rely on a number that you received in an email or a phone call or a text message um, or even a Google search. Be careful. Uh, don't don't get uh, sucked into a paid ad uh, that's designed to mimic uh, the IRS. Uh, and then I think, um, you know, uh, just. Uh, uh, if you're a victim, clearly, I mean, you you want to reach out uh, immediately um, to the IRS, uh, and you can certainly reach out to us as well, and we can get folks connected with resources that can help them, you know, when they've been involved um, in any sort of an identity theft scheme or problem. Uh, but uh, really, it's just, I think, a matter of just being thoughtful and mindful, at, you know, as in everything uh, that we do that involves our sensitive information or our hard earned money. Uh, it's just super important to be as careful as you possibly can, as diligent, you know, make sure if you are going to a tax preparer that you've checked them out. Uh, you're not just getting sucked into somebody that says they can get you a return super fast, uh, that you're dealing with somebody that's got a solid reputation in the marketplace. And uh, the good rule of thumb, the golden rule in, in, in all of these things is uh, should be, if it seems too good to be true, it probably is. 
Yeah, 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 for sure. No that's, doubt about that. That's a classic. Yeah. The classics are always the best, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, speaking with uh, Jim Hegarty, he's the president and CEO of the Better Business Bureau and uh, talking about tax scams uh, to avoid uh, in this uh, late in the tax season. But uh, but Jim, uh, the, the Better Business Bureau is also uh, a kind of a, a watch watchdog or a, or a bulwark, not just with, you know, tax scams, but, you know, other businesses as well. It, it, yeah. Let, let's first uh, describe to, to the folks. To, to, to listeners what the BBB is and what it is not, if you could. Yeah, so, you know, the BBB's mission is to be the leader in advancing marketplace trust. So, you know, we manage business reviews. Uh, we have over uh, on, on tens of millions of businesses. Uh, so you can come to BBB.org. Uh, you can type in a company's name or you can type in a company's name in a Google search and just put the letters BBB after it. It's it's going to lead you to uh, the business review that we have on that company. It allows you to see how long they've been in business. Are they accredited by the Better Business Bureau? What their complaint history is? Uh, do they have favorable customer reviews? Uh, who the principles of the company are. Uh, so we've got pretty rich, robust data about businesses uh, and their marketplace performance. Uh, so it's a it's a fantastic resource to use, you know, when you're selecting contractors, when you're selecting anybody uh, that you're going to engage with, uh, where the engagement involves uh, a need to have a high level of trust. Uh, we have been uh, in existence since 1912, so we're over 100 years old. Uh, the BBB was actually started by the founder of Coca-Cola, uh, and, and, and it, they began really as advertising vigilance groups. Uh, legitimate business leaders at the time were uh, fed up uh, with a lot of what they felt was advertising uh, that could not be substantiated by uh, the, uh, uh, a, a, pro a proliferation of snake oil salesmen, I guess, for lack of a better term. Uh, and, and they felt that it was important to establish a group uh, that would call those uh, those bad actors out, uh, challenge them on their advertising claims, and then shut them down if they weren't able uh, to sub substantiate the claims that they were making about their products and services. Uh, and that eventually turned into uh, the Better Business Bureaus. Uh, and we have Better Business Bureaus in every state uh, and all across North America. So the United States, Canada, and we now have a Better Business Bureau uh, in Mexico as well. Uh, so I think currently there's like 97 BBBs. Um, our BBB happens to be a regional bureau. So we we uh, we manage uh, services in in four states currently uh, and have some some other ex expansions planned. Uh, and uh, and again, you know, we are uh, your source uh, for. Uh, reliable, trustworthy information on businesses, uh, you know, when trust uh, is a very important factor in your transaction. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, the Better Business Bureau is not? Because I, I've, I've, you know, in conversations with other people, you know, and uh, leading up to this interview, you know, some people think that uh, the Better Business Bureau will go with you to court if you're suing somebody. And I'm, I, that, that didn't strike me as something that that is a service that the BBB provides. Is, am, is that correct? Yeah, so we're not a government agency. Uh, we do provide dispute resolution services. So if you have an issue with a company, you can call the BBB. Uh, you can talk to us. You can let us know what's happened. And assuming that your complaint meets our complaint acceptance criteria, you can file a complaint on a business. We'll notify the business, give them an opportunity to be responsive. Uh, and then we work uh uh, as essentially a mediator uh, between the business uh, and the consumer uh, to try to bring that complaint uh, to a successful resolution that everybody can live with. Uh, we're highly successful at that. We're probably the most experienced entity uh, in the country in helping people to manage challenging complaints with businesses. Uh, and most of our complaints are resolved to everybody's satisfaction. And all of those services are free to the consuming public. Uh, we also we do provide legally binding arbitration services for our accredited businesses. So if an accredited business 
has a dispute with a customer uh, that just gets to a point where uh, they're at an impasse and we don't seem to be able um, to get it resolved to anybody's satisfaction, the BBB will actually assign a trained arbitrator uh, that'll hold a hearing, uh, listen to both sides of that case and make a decision, uh, which our accredited businesses have agreed to ad they, th to adhere to. So they're bound by the arbitrator's decision. We don't have a lot of those uh, because our dispute resolution team is very skilled and very talented when it comes to assisting people uh, with challenging complaints. Uh, so we're a great resource for that. Uh, and, and you can also post reviews on businesses. So if you've had a great experience uh, with the business uh, and you want to tell us about it, uh, you can you can con you can reach out to the BBB at BBB.org uh, and you can post a favorable review on them. Or uh, if it's a negative review, you can do that as well. Nothing like a little positive reinforcement, I suppose. Yes, for sure. We're speaking with uh, Jim Haggerty, uh, president and CEO of the Better Business Bureau. And uh, Jim, it has been an absolute pleasure having you uh, uh, on the show this morning. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, uh, to join us and to explain a lot of these things. Because I can imagine that consumers probably, you know, the, 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 old, the old phrase, buyer beware, I think that originated in a Shakespeare play, if I'm not correct, uh, that uh, buyer beware is, they're kind of all along alone out there they feel sometimes and having the better business bureau kind of in your back pocket does kind of make being a consumer in in a free market economy a little easier to deal with well we certainly think so uh and millions and millions of consumers that uh, connect with us on an annual basis i think would agree uh, that we are uh, a fantastic resource and and really since 1912 We've been delivering these services in one way or the other to the consuming public uh, at absolutely no charge. So it's our community of trustworthy businesses that are accredited by us that support all that work, make it possible. Uh, and so if you if you happen to be in a business um, and you see that they are accredited and they have the sign of a better business, you know, thank them uh, for supporting the important work that we do every day and the assistance that we provide to the consuming public. It's super important. Excellent. Jim, it's uh, been a pleasure having you on the show this morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Hey, thank you. Have a great one, okay? You, you bet. Jim Hegarty, uh, President and CEO of the Better Business Bureau, joining us this morning on I&A, Issues and Answers, a public affairs program of the Omaha radio stations of NRG Media. My name is Ed Thompson. I am your host and producer of the show, and we look forward to talking to you next time. Thanks for joining us. This has been INA. Tune in next time to INA. Issues and Answers, an NRG Media production.